So today we're going to calculate a Taylor polynomial for the function of sine of x at around a point pi over 6 or 30 degrees, whichever you want to call it, but better to use pi over 6 for Taylor polynomials. And we're going to calculate it to the fifth degree. So the degree, uh, the degree of the Taylor polynomial is variable n. So that's what we've got here. So this one here is n. And then these will all go up to the nth term, nth derivative. And the function we're doing is sine of x. So basically what this means down here is t would then become t5x. So t to the fifth degree polynomial um, Taylor series equals f at pi over 6. Because a is pi over 6. So at point a. So a is pi over 6. So all the a's here will become pi over 6. So, so the value at pi over 6 for sine, and then the first derivative at pi over 6 divided by 1 factorial, and then x minus a, which is pi over 6, to the power of 1. The second term is the second derivative at pi over 6 over 2 factorial, and then x minus pi over 6 again, this time squared. The next one, we've got the third derivative at, again, pi over 6, and this time 3 factorial which we know is 1 times 2 times 3, and then x minus pi over 6 cubed. Now you see there's a pattern form in here. Remember the 3, the 3 factorial and the cubed, the fourth, fourth derivative, 4 factorial to the power of 4, fifth derivative, 5 factorial to the power of 5. And that's the generic term for all the Taylor series. So what we're going to do now is we're going to integrate the function sine of x five times so that's what we're going to need to do and then each derivative we're going to calculate its value at pi over six so let's move on to the next stage so differentiate the function five times and calculate each value at pi over six so first of all we've got the function sine of x and sine of pi over six or sine of 30 whichever way you want to call it is a half so that's straightforward for the first part then we calculate the first derivative. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. And then the cosine, which is the first derivative, so basically this basically, this basically here means cosine of pi over 6, is root 3 over 2. So that's the first derivative taken care of. And then what we need to do now is find the second, third, and fourth, and fifth derivatives. So for the second derivative, we take the derivative of cosine to get to minus sine. So basically the second derivative of sine is minus sine. So now we're going to calculate the second derivative of pi over 6. Well, we calculated earlier that sine of pi over 6 is a half. That's this one here. So therefore the second derivative at minus sine is minus a half. So the second derivative of pi over 6 is minus a half. Then the third derivative is take the derivative of minus sine, which is then minus cosine. Well, the derivative of sine was cosine, so it's pretty straightforward to work out that derivative of minus sine is minus cosine. What you could imagine is here, when taking the derivative of sine, is that you've got a minus 1 integer in front of sine. So minus 1 times sine of x equals minus 1 times cosine of x. Same as sine would give you cosine. And again, we calculate this minus cosine at pi over 6. So cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, because that's what we calculated here. So minus cosine is minus root 3 over 2. And then again, we go to the fourth derivative. So we take the derivative of minus cosine, and then we end up with sine. So this follows on from what we'd already worked out here. So we've got plus cosine gives minus sine. So minus cosine will give plus sine. And then the value of that, well now we're repeating ourselves here now because now the fourth derivative is the same as the original function. So that's a half. The fifth derivative is the derivative of sine, which is cosine, which again repeats ourselves from what we got to from here. And then we knew that this value of the first derivative is root 3 over 2. So the fifth derivative is going to be the same. That's also root 3 over 2. And this pattern will go all the way down, all the way down to as many terms as you like. And so will the values, of course, because they're the same derivatives. So we've got sine, cosine, minus sine, minus cosine, 
sine cosine. So this groups of four, so sine cosine minus sine minus cosine will then go all the way down to as many derivatives as you like. And the same with the values. Okay, so now we can start to input some values into our Taylor polynomial. So now we've got the n for five, so t5 of x equals f of pi over six. So that's the first thing we've put in. So all these a's are now filled in. So you can see where they are. So that goes all in these ones here. So all in all, there's 11 pi, 11 values, which are pi over six to fill in. Then the first derivative of pi over six <coughs> divided by one factorial, x minus pi over six, which is x minus a, plus the second derivative of pi over six, two factorial, and so on and so on and so on. So always good as well to remember just to do it one stage, stage at a time and then fill in each value one, one, st one step at a time. So I'll put in all the pi over sixes. Next, we're going to put in the values of all the derivatives. And those values are what we've worked out here. So the first derivative is root three over two. So where it says here, root first derivative of pi over six, we're going to put root three over two there. So we put root three on the top, two on the bottom. So that's root three over two. Same another example here. We've got the fourth derivative is a half. So if it says the fourth derivative here, we could put a one on the top and then two times four factorial on the bottom. So let's go ahead now and do that. So now what we've got the, the going going through each stage from, from the previous one. So this is what we'd worked out before. And then when we start filling in all the values at pi over six. This is what we get to next. So f of pi over six. So that sine of pi over six is a half. So that's how we get to this one. Then we add the first derivative of pi over six, of pi over six divided by one factorial. So that's the root three over two times one factorial x minus pi over six. So that's that term. The second derivative we calculated was minus a half. So we put minus a half in there, so minus a half, so that's how where these figures come from. And then times two factorial, that still stays on the denominator. And the x minus pi over six squared stays the same. These will stay the same now all the way through. They won't change, even on the when we've calculated and simplified the whole terms. They will stay all the way through. Third derivative, so the third derivative goes on the top of this one here with the cubed. So the third derivative was minus root three over two. So there it goes. So it goes in there like that. And then the denominator is multiplied by three factorial. And then x minus pi over six cubed. And then a fourth derivative was a half, which you can see here, which is in this one. So then that's where the one and the two here come from, times four factorial. Then x minus pi over six to the power of four. That stays. And then the final term, which is the fifth derivative, was root three over two. So root three divided by two times five factorial. And five factorial we know is one times two times three times four times five, which is 120. So now we can simplify some of these values off now. So to explain the simplification, what I've done is here. So a half, that stays the same, no change there. Now this root three divided by two, two times one factorial, or two times one is two. So that's the root three and two. And then the pi minus, so x minus pi over six, I've just moved onto the numerator. So now I've got root three times x minus pi over six divided by two. And then that's just not one nice neat term. Looks a lot tidier than what we've got here. The next term, I've got minus a half times two factorial on the denominator. Two factorial is two. So two times two is a four. So essentially what we've got here, this part of the term is minus a quarter. So that's why I've flipped this plus sign to a minus. So that's what I've got there. And then the minus one, I can just leave as a one. Well, we don't need to write a one. So then what I've done is I've done the x minus pi over six squared over four. So that's the four. Flip this over onto the numerator. And that's how we get to that stage. The next term, minus root three over two times three factorial. Now I've done a little bit of clever simplification here. The x minus pi over 6 cubed, that's gone onto the numerator. And you'll see that the minus has been put in there. So that's this minus sign here. So this one has gone to a minus there. So they, that's changed that one. 
then on the denominator you've got 2 times 3 factorial or 2 times 3 factorial is 2 times 6 which is 12 so basically what I've done is here to get rid of the root 3 on the top and get it on the bottom I've multiplied the top and the bottom by root 3 so if you multiply the top by root 3 you get 3 you multiply the bottom by root 3 you've got 2 times 6 which is 12 and then 12 root 3 and then what I've done is the the 3 on the top I've divided all the terms by 3 so instead of 12 so 3 times divided by 12 times root 3 I then got 1 over 4 times root 3 and then the 1 on the top we can disappear and that's 4 root 3 that's how we get to that one the next term is pretty straightforward x minus pi over 6 to the power of 4 that's just flipped onto the top that's straightforward the 1 can disappear the plus sign can stay 2 times 4 factorial or 4 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 which is 24 24 times 2 is 48 hence why we got the 48 here and on the last one I've simplified this again like we did on the cubed one so 2 times 5 factorial 5 factorial is 120 2 times 120 is 240 and again what I've done is I've multiplied the top and the bottom by root 3 so whatever you do to the top you can do to the bottom and you don't change to the value the value of the fraction at all so then if you multiply the top by root 3 you end up with 3 root 3 times root 3 is 3 and then the bottom I've got 120 times 2 which is 240 so then what I've then done is I've divided the top and the bottom by 3 so the 3 on the top will disappear to 1 and the 240 divided by 3 will be 80 so then I've got 80 times root 3 so x minus pi over 6 to the power of 5 divided by 8, 80 times root 3 and that is our answer and that's a nice neat looking Taylor polynomial there for such a complicated function so a half plus root 3 times x minus pi over 6 divided by 2 minus x minus pi over 6 squared over 4 and then a minus again x minus pi over 6 cubed divided by 4 root 3 plus x minus pi over 6 to the power of 4 divided by 48 plus x minus pi over 6 to the power of 5 divided by 80 times root 3 and that is your answer okay thanks for watching